Credit News Source. I'm Katie Anderson. <laughs> Testing, testing, testing. I don't have nothing else to read, so. Talking, talking, talking. I'm Isaiah Joseph, talking more. A low-income apartment complex is one step closer to being redeveloped with SPLOSS 2020 dollars. All in favor? Aye. The Madison County Library is exhibiting works from Georgia artists with disabilities. The artists hope to raise public awareness through their creative skills. This is Northeast Georgia's only local source for TV news. From the Grady College at the University of Georgia, this is Grady News Source. Good evening and welcome to Grady News Source. I'm Katie Anderson. I'm Wanga Shirurobi with sports, where later I'll be telling you about local high school Georgia football teams. And I'm Peyton Lewis with weather, so stay tuned for more information about local drought conditions later this evening. Breaking news. We begin today's newscast with breaking news about members of a UGA sorority involved in hazing. Grady News Source reporter Taylor Harris is on Millage Avenue to tell us more. Taylor? Yeah, Peyton, Tri-Delta's national office did confirm with us shortly before going to air that the University of Georgia's chapter is on probation. Earlier today, UGA refused to comment on the matter and said Tri-Delta's national office was looking into the situation. Tri-Delta's fraternity president, Kimberly Sullivan, confirmed with us in a statement that the sorority members involved are being held accountable for hazing. The statement reads, as a national advocate in the effort to end hazing, Tri-Delta has a strict zero tolerance policy against okay, hazing. Alex, move it a little bit that way, just turn the thing. Also in the statement, there she said Tri-Delta will continue to work with UGA and the Greek community to educate members. We are still trying to confirm how many members were involved and what disciplinary measurements will be taken at this time. Back to you guys. Thank you, Taylor. The athens Clark County Commission approved the North Athens Downtown Development Project last night. Today they are signing a memorandum to work with the Athens Housing Authority to redevelop Bethel Midtown Village. I'm joined now by Grady News Source reporter Paige Watkins, who is live from the area just north of downtown. Yeah, Katie, last night's decision is Bethel Midtown Village one step closer to improvement. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Tuesday night, the mayor and commission approved unanimously the memorandum of understanding for the North Athens Downtown Development Project at City Hall during their regular session. The project intends for athens Clark County to use approximately $39 million from the $44.5 million Splash Affordable Housing Project budget for Bethel Midtown Village. The funding would go towards the renovation or redevelopment of the approximately 12-acre site with the Athens Housing Authority. Athens resident Erin Stacer says she's optimistic but skeptical. A lot of times you're told one thing, you're promised these things that sound wonderful and then they're not followed through. Stacer says the board is being very thoughtful during the process and thinks there are many ways this decision could benefit her personally. The more that my fellow community members have the opportunity to thrive and do well, 
that, that's better for me too. After the formal memorandum of understanding is signed today, Mayor Kelly Gertz explains what will happen next. We'll be endeavoring into a long series of conversations, first and foremost with the residents of the property, as well as with the broader community to begin to talk about what people want to see on that property and what they want to see happening as we see complete redevelopment of the property. The mayor says the biggest benefit will be for the residents of Bethel Midtown Village. They're going to have local management, they're going to have local ownership, they're going to be able to engage with the people that are taking care of the property where they live and those people will have a better cared for space and a safer space that's more fit for human habitation. Although voters still need to approve the SPLOS 1% sales tax in the November referendum, Gertz is confident that it will pass. Uh, I'm going to wake up a happy man on November 6th. He says upon passage, the residents will be the first they will speak with. To say, what do you need in your home and in your community? Sean Maddox, who currently live at Bethel Midtown Village. So what is your reactions towards the commission moving forward on this development project? Well, me personally, um, I'm very excited. Um, I felt like everything has been expanding around us, you know, the, the hotel here and the, the huge uh, student residencies just came. I mean, everything's just exploding, you know, and it's just being built up and I feel like Bethel is just the next stage you know it was long overdue this property has been here since my father was a 60 year he's 60 now over 60 and he would stay here when he was a little boy so that's all that. um yeah i think if i can speak for everybody you know and say that we're all ecstatic about the um, new development that's coming um you know because it gives everybody you know a breath of fresh air you know knowing that there's something new to come and you know you know, we've been plagued with issues from roaches to leaky toilets to leaky ceilings. So right. it'll be nice to have something new, you know, that we can walk into and, you know, just live comfortable. Well, thank y'all so much for joining me. If you want more information about Bethel, visit our website, GradyNewsSource.com. Back to you, Katie. Thanks, Paige. In the city of Houston and Jackson County, Mayor Teresa Kennerly is under public scrutiny for comments made at a closed door session to another council member. A hearing in front of a judge was held this morning in regards to the citizens' demand for her recall election. We are here to consider uh, petitions for review of the sufficiency of a recall petition. The case that is set uh, first is case number 19CB0768, Teresa Ann Kennerly versus Mary S. Morris. The hearing will determine whether or not the actions and comments made by Kennerly are grounds for recall election. With the end of summer comes the end of the summer burn ban. Regulations surrounding outdoor and open burning are changing. Stay tuned. Are your children in the right car seat for their age and size? Is the seat supposed to be forward facing or rear facing? Did they move to a booster seat too soon? It may be too late to check when you're on the road. Fortunately, you're on the couch. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Don't think you know. Know you know. I'm a single mother and I was the main one working, so I never thought that I could go back to school, you know? My sister, my mother, everybody wanted to help me with my kids. I could not have gotten my diploma without my family. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. 
It's a beautiful day out here. Sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 90 miles per hour winds are expected. According to asking everyone, stay indoors. Come on, that's it. Let's go. Georgia made national news as a federal judge blocked House Bill 481, also known as the Heartbeat Bill. The judge, Steve C. Jones, previously served he as the Superior Court judge here in athens Carr County. This decision is the first step as the lawsuit between the American Civil Liberties Union and the state of Georgia makes its way through the court system. The law, which was scheduled to go into effect on January 1st, would ban abortions as early as six weeks. The summer burning ban has been lifted in Georgia, and residents are now able to burn yard debris after obtaining a permit. Grady News Source reporter Jada Bowman has information on how to obtain a permit. Each year, the Environmental Protection Division declares an outdoor burning ban that is in effect from May 1st to September 30th to comply with federal clean air regulations. During the summer months, the ozone in the air we breathe can reach unhealthy levels, and the Georgia GEP <laughs> EDP has identified open burning as a significant contributor of the pollutants. The Georgia Forestry Commission approves permits for use. You can visit gfc.state.ga.us to obtain a permit. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do so. So you're going to scroll to the bottom of the website and you're going to select the county that you are in. In this case, I'm selecting Barrow. And then you're going to select what type of permit you'd like to attain. So here we have a hand pile vegetation only. So you're going to hit the enter button and this will tell you exactly who to contact and what number to call in order to obtain the permit. It's important to know that any permit you obtain can only be used on the day you obtained it unless you got it after dark and then residents are able to use it the next day. Now there is a list of items that the permit only allows of the burning of, things like vegetation with leaf piles and grass clippings. The Georgia Forestry Commission declares it is unlawful to burn man-made materials such as tires, shingles, plastics, lumber, and household garbage. Fire weather conditions are also taken into consideration when requesting a burning permit. The Georgia Forestry Commission will deny a permit if the fire level danger is a four or a five. Today, no critical fire weather conditions are expected. And now on to Peyton with the weather. At Sweet Olive Farm, it's more than just people suffering from this drought. I'll tell you a little more back at the studio after the break. Hi, I'm Peter. And there's nothing I love more than sharing vegetables with my friends. Come on in! Help yourself to anything. That's why we give our food the utmost respect it deserves. Did you know there are simple steps we can all take to help save food? You can cook it, store it, even share it. Just don't waste it. Because when it comes to food, better ate than never. To learn more, visit savethefood.com. You think getting dumped by text is harsh? Try getting dumped by a tennis ball. My ex-owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. But the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? Attention travelers, next Tuesday, a major power outage will cause complete chaos throughout the city. Food, water, and phone service will be in short supply. There will likely be panic citywide. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. The disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. And now, 
the weather. I'm Peyton Lewis with your weather for tonight. So we're going to go through an update on the drought. I'll give you your five day forecast and I'll tell you a little bit about the pollen count and talk about why it's been so hot lately. So let's talk about tonight. At dinner time, around 6 p.m., it'll be partly cloudy and a lovely 94 degrees. At 9 p.m., it'll cool off and be clear skies at 82 degrees, and by midnight, it'll be 79 degrees with clear skies. Now, tomorrow in Athens, on your ride to work at 9 in the morning, it'll be a lovely 78 degrees and clear skies. By noon, it'll heat up a little bit more at 91 degrees and even more at 3 p.m with 96 degrees, but will be clear skies all day long. Now let's take you through your five day forecast real quick. So tomorrow we'll see the highest temperature we've seen this week with 98 degrees as the high and 69 degrees as the low. Friday we'll see similar temperatures with 97 being the high and 67 being the low. Saturday through Monday we'll see pretty consistent temperatures Saturday is 78 degrees with a low of 64, and Sunday and Monday stay the same. Now let's talk about this drought season that we've been experiencing. So earlier today, I stopped by Sweet Olive Farm and Animal Rescue to talk with three of the women there about how the drought has been affecting their animals. At Sweet Olive Farm and Animal Rescue, the drought that Georgia has been experiencing has caused a tough time for their animals. Farm volunteer Deborah Burdett gave a better insight to what these animals are experiencing. The horses' hooves and the animals' hooves get very dry um, and brittle and break because they're not getting that moisture. Last month, the state of Georgia only saw one inch of rain. This affects everything, from soil to air quality, and the animals as well as the farmers at Sweet Olive are seeing these effects firsthand. Janie Sanders, another Sweet Olive volunteer, spoke about another big impact from the drought. The grass is an issue. Yeah. Um, the horse pasture is pretty bare of grass, so the owner cat has to continually feed hay, yeah. which is expensive. And it's a nonprofit, so that bites into the bites into the profits. <laughs> It's predicted that there may be a glimmer of hope for the drought conditions this upcoming Monday, with a 40% chance of rain in the forecast. When asked about the chances of rain not coming, farm owner Kat Hawkins says the farm will be fine if it can have two things. We just believe in shade and breezes, and if we can find that, we usually can get by all right. To recuperate some of the costs the drought has caused, the farm will be holding a fundraiser this Saturday from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. So as you can see, with this drought season, we've only gotten an inch of rain within the past month. This has been impacting the animals at Sweet Olive a lot. But the women are holding a fundraiser this Saturday that you can help with all of the supplies needed to heal the animals and bring more food to them. Now let's talk about this dew point. So a dew point is the humidity that you're experiencing outside causing some wetness in the air. So when you go outside and you instantly feel that sticky, wet feeling, this is what that is. So today it was 68 degrees, which is very high, and tomorrow it will be the same at also 68 degrees. So when you step outside and you feel instantly wet and sticky, now you know what that is. And for all of my allergy sufferers out there, I have the pollen count for you. So today we're experiencing a low in tree and grass pollen, but moderate in ragweed. So be sure to bring your tissues. I'm Peyton Lewis with your Northeast Georgia weather. Thank you. I am Wangeshi Warawi with your Grady News Source Sports. It's official, UJ student government wants you to dress down with the dogs for the football game against University of South Carolina. And I got to talk with the president of UGA's extra special people, one of several students who made this proclamation a reality. Hello. Hi. I'm from Blue Hood Stone Barns. We brought a meal for you and I'm here to serve it to you. Okay, great. Come in. Zucchini carbonara, made from zucchini that was harvested earlier this morning. Again? Oh. <laughs> hey, Dan Barber. You have room for a little bit more? <laughs> come yeah, on come in. Come on in. Brochettes, the sausage. So when we made that zucchini carbonara, you know, they're the end pieces of the zucchini and then the cores that we cut away. Not to mention zucchini flour. Usually those get thrown out. We use them to create an entire second dish. Does that, oh. Again? Huh. I'm here to bring you your third course. It's the vines from your zucchini. We'll have a little zucchini stem 
pasta, a different experience of zucchini. When we start to think differently about our food, we can get a lot more out of it. This is delicious. What do you think we can make out of this? 40% of food in America is never eaten. Cook it, store it, share it. Visit savethefood.com. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing too hard at one of your colleagues' jokes at the office party? She's not even funny. Warning sign, those drinks are probably going to your head. Probably okay isn't okay when it comes to drinking and driving. They call me Maxi, but I prefer tripod. I was your above average four-legged homie and then wham, bam, minivan. Some people pity me, now that's lame. I still run, fetch, and swim. And the ladies love me, I'm the ultimate wingman. Just don't ask me to high five. I'm Juan Gachimarowe, and you're watching Grady News Source Sports. UJ's football team may have had a bye week last week, but Northeast Georgia's high school football players were hard at work. Jackson County had a pretty rough week with both high schools losing to their opponents. Barrow, Oglethorpe, and Madison didn't have much better luck either, also seeing no wins from their varsity football games. Oconee County, on the other hand, saw nothing but wins as both of their high schools were victorious. An especially exciting time for North Oconee, who won its homecoming game. Lastly, Cedar Shows represented Clark County highly by winning their game as Clark Central had a bye week. It's a rare event, but the University of Georgia and the University of South Carolina are actually pairing up. But a good cause can bring even rivals together. And that's what the two rivals are hoping to promote through Dress Down with the Dogs. UGA Student Government Association, also known as SGA, is teaming up with the university's Extra Special People Incorporated to promote Dress Down with the Dogs for the October 12th game. After speaking at the SGA meeting Tuesday, Daniela Conroy, the president of Extra Special People, or ESP, learned that her proclamation to promote the Dress so Down passed laughing. unanimously. Congratulations, Proclamation 32. Conroy said Dress Down with the Dogs is one of several efforts ESP has to raise awareness and support people with different types of abilities. The University of South Carolina Student Government Association is also voting to pass their own casual dressing proclamation tonight. Hannah Payne, Senate Director of Communications for SGA, so this is really going to extend the amount of people they reach. So what we're trying to help with is pushing the event, raising awareness, posting on social media, getting the word out. ESP participant Megan McCutcheon is looking forward to the upcoming game. I am very excited about the Dress Down campaign. It means a lot that people are supporting me and my friends, McCutcheon said. So how do you dress down with the dogs? First, you can contact ESP at UGA for your very own Dress Down with the Dogs button. Then you can come to Tailgate, Georgia to get your very own personalized Dress Down with the Dogs t-shirt. Even though you might not be able to do all that, Conroy says what matters most is that you make an effort, dress a little casually, and show support for the extra special people at UGA. To really raise awareness so everyone can cheer for the same cause and that we can all together support people with all abilities. The game is in 10 days. This gives you plenty of time to reach out to ESP at UGA to let them know you want to order a button. Go to Tailgate Georgia downtown for a dress down with the dogs t-shirt and let the extra special people at UGA know you support. With recent seasons, it may be hard to believe, but UGA and Tennessee are neck and neck in their series record, and they're going to use Saturday's game to make history. That's right, UGA has won 23 games against the Tennessee Volunteers, and Tennessee has won 23 games against the Bulldogs. They've both tied twice. This means Saturday's game at Tennessee will determine who's the leading team between the two rivals. While the Bulldogs won the past two games, they suffered a devastating blow in 2016 when Tennessee threw a winning touchdown in the final play of the game. According to UGA Media, UGA's head football coach Kirby Smart said he's hoping to get a jump start on Tennessee as the bye week allowed his team to get a little bit ahead with practice. And up next, hear about how Georgia artists with disabilities are raising awareness in Madison County. There's a lot of fear in coming back to school. 
I'm a 40-year-old man that walked in there to get his high school diploma. It was very hard for me, but one of the teachers was uh, Miss Araceli. She gave me direction. Every single time I had a question, she'll put down whatever she's doing, and she'll sit there with you until you get it. 50% of getting your high school diploma is walking through those doors. The other 50% is doing the work. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Is your family in need of more quality time together? Hello, I'm Dr. Spruce. Nature is best enjoyed together. So bring the whole family to discover all the bonding and stress-reducing benefits parks and forests have to offer. Visit discovertheforest.org and trade in phone time for family time. Birds, squirrels, chipmunks, grass, worms, bugs, trees, rocks, and other objects in nature cannot talk. If you'd like to have a conversation while visiting nature, you will need to bring humans along. We strongly recommend starting with your family. short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. The Madison County Library has opened the Georgia Artists with Disabilities exhibit. This is the busy, biggest exhibit the library has had and they hope to more people will come out to see all it has to offer. Sunday afternoon kicked off Madison County Library's Georgia Artists with Disabilities exhibition. Artwork created by disabled artists from all over Georgia is being shown and sold. Tour coordinator Teresa Shields explains the purpose of the exhibition. Hey, yeah, Georgia Artists with Disabilities, it was started as a way to give disabled artists a means to, you know, show their art and, and you know, sell their art. And again, since we, we also have a judging portion of that, so they're they're awarded for their art, and that's the art that's gone around the state. That, that Georgia Artists with Disabilities started 35 years ago by the Pilot Club, an international service organization. The Pilot Club started this initiative to provide a space where disabled Georgia artists can show and sell their art while creating public awareness of their talents. Jennifer Ivey, manager of Madison County Library, shares what this exhibit means to the library and to the community. For us here, this is the biggest exhibit that we've had. Last year's was about the same size, but um, most of the art that we get in here is um, local people or the schools. It's really good. It's great to have that in here. But having this, it's kind of a professional art exhibit. Um, I think it really adds a lot to the library as a cultural hub of our community. The Georgia Artists with Disabilities exhibition will remain open through November. Gives you plenty of time to come down to Madison County Library and check it out. Jasmine Salard, Grady News Source. Madison County Library is open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day except Tuesday and Thursday, where they stay open until 8 p.m., and on Sunday from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Thanks, Jasmine. And thank you all for joining us this evening for Grady News Source. I'm Katie Anderson. I'm Wangeshi Waroe. And I'm Peyton Lewis. Good night. is a student production of the Grady College of Journalism and Mass Communication at the University of Georgia, which is solely responsible for its contents. Views expressed do not represent those of the administration nor the Board of Regents at the University System of Georgia. What to expect when you're expecting? Like you? A teenager. Today, I'm going to show you how to team-proof your home. First step, hide the car keys. Preferably somewhere they would never look. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. Ready for the Mom, you don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. 
You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. <laughs> Did you hear about the pony with a sore throat? He was a little horse. <laughs> Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. <laughs> Why couldn't the pelican? Wait. Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because the players kept dribbling all over it. Where did cats go on vacation? New York. <laughs> Did you know parking over tall, dry grass can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. Good job to y'all, but good job to him too. Just give him a little clap. Yeah, for that A block with all those live shots, that was an absolute party to punch through and a lot of clarity had to be worked here and that was nice working with you guys and making sure that that was clear. That, help that helped a lot. But yeah, I mean, I just ran through it a bunch and it went pretty smooth. Um, just getting better every show. It was first Wednesday that I punched through, so that's, that's a party. You usually do that little Monday shift. But uh, good job, everyone. Go dogs. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I thought you guys had a pretty good show today. I really didn't see anything like horribly wrong. I don't think anything was mislabeled today, or nobody told me if it was, so good job. Um, weather did start just a little bit late, but it worked out because we went with a three minute and all of that, but um, maybe just in the future on time a little bit. But it worked out today, so. I will say I am glad that we did communicate beforehand. So, like, you knew that I was going to be late. I didn't know I would be as late as I was. But um, I am glad that we all worked it out and made it to where that could happen tonight. So Yeah. So if you're going to be a little late, just um, Peyton, like, texted me and let me know. So I, like, got here a few minutes later because I didn't have to get here right at 12. Yeah. So if you know you're going to be late, like, obviously tell the class. But yeah. also let it be known to, like, me or Rachel or Sarah, whoever's here working, just because, like, we kind of need to know other things, too. Um, what was the other thing? I think we didn't up end up going with it, the bookstore VO that we cut, but we didn't, we weren't going to cut it, but we cut it. It was um, in Super Clips, it's three different things, but it, it was in TriCaster, it was one clip together, and we saw it right before it was supposed to go on, but... Basically, it was two different things, so if something had happened to the one in the TriCaster, we would have had to go to playback, and it was three different things, and it probably would have looked different. Um, I think you guys, like, changed it and redid so it. So I think we noticed it, and then we just didn't remove it from where we put it originally. Okay. Yeah. So it was, like, all in there. We didn't know the rules on deleting something from Small Tree, but we found out that it was three separate clips, and so we just put it into one clip and then put it back in TriCaster where it was supposed to go. Thought we were clear, but just yeah. You did, you did good. You're half yeah. good. Just get rid of the <laughs> good. yeah. Just get rid of the other <laughs> ones. Just get rid of the other okay, ones cool. as well, and then that way we avoid it. But like, yeah. it didn't really matter today, and even if we, we did it, yeah. go live, we fixed it in the moment. Yeah. So yeah, mm -hmm. I thought it was really like nitpicking though. So yeah. Other than that, you guys did great today. So great. Good job. I hand it over to you guys. Um, we'll see if Skylar's ready, ready yeah. in the studio. Let me. Yeah, we'll Skylar's Skylar. ready. We're gonna toss to her first. I'm sure she can't hear us. <laughs> Skylar? So let's awesome. dig into Skylar's digital a little bit. I want to start off and say I'm super, super proud of our digital MMJs. They really stepped up this week. 
each day this week we were down a TV MMJ, at least one. So um, Digital, you really stepped up and you did whatever it took to be a team player. So, so thank you so much. Um, let's go into Instagram. So each day this week we've had at least three posts and they've been very interactive. We broke news today with a Tri-Delta story and we got it out pretty quickly. So um, congrats to the whole team working together. Um, Taylor going to grab the picture so we had that visual image to make the graphics. Um, Jada, really nice video. I don't know if it's gonna play, but I know it got to go in the broadcast. Very interactive with really great information that was newsworthy. Um, and then we had the book story. It was good information, kind of teased tonight's package. And then we also were able to have one story posted on the website today. Um, actually, we had two from Julia. We had the, um, the job search story, and then we also had the Bethel home story. And not only did we ha have Julia post two stories, Julia also went and helped me create a live Twitter thread at four o'clock from the meeting. So that was really um, interactive. We had some photos, videos, graphics, um, lots of really great content. So that was something new that we tried with Professor Bright's help. Um, and I think it's getting some really great engagement on the Twitter platform. So I think, and on Facebook, we posted two things as well today. Not as much because a lot of our stuff was more trending for a younger audience for Instagram. And um, I think that's about it. So back to you guys. Thanks again for all your help. Thank you, Skylar, for Thank all you, the Skylar. good news. And actually, today we had uh, quite a few challenges again, which led us to what? To innovation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, we were missing two TV reporters. So we ended up using a lot of what we saw s from the web and from social. Basically, we used that in the show as well. And I think it, it worked out very well, uh, in including uh, Jada's uh, smart smart uh, t uh, smart, <laughs> smart <laughs> it's board. been a long day yeah smart board uh, um, talk and uh, we, we just used a lot of this stuff on on our air and uh, maybe you want to tell us yeah. what else we um, uh, I think I'm actually gonna run it the way we ran the show so starting with the greeting uh, I don't know how y'all felt but I felt it worked better having you talk a little bit about your stories and not just saying like I'm with weather and then that being that I think it made it more conversational. I loved the little breaking news thing we had. That was that was pretty awesome. Uh, the live shot with Taylor, that was really great. There was a bus, but there's nothing you could have done about it that. Was so <laughs> it was pretty funny. Yeah, you walk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that was exactly the reference that Jim made after it happened. He was like, have you guys seen that video of the, bu the Marta bus? Yeah. The Dome issue? Um, but yeah, I, I heard it behind me as I was talking, and then I saw the look on their face, and I was like, a bus just happened. pulled up behind me. <laughs> so there, yeah, there was absolutely nothing you could have done about that, but I just want to thank you so much for going and doing that, because I know that we had you on the Hushton story, and then we moved you to that as well. So I think that live shot worked really well. And then we went right into Paige's live shot, which I also think worked really well. Um, she had two sources, which I think was just great. I know that was something new we tried today, is having a live interview, and I think that went really, really well. <laughs> Um, the one thing, I, she didn't introduce them, not that I heard. Did oh, she? She did? She yeah. did? Okay. So that went really well. Um, I liked the, the SOT we had with the Houston Mayor recall. I think that went well as well. And then, let's see. Jada, your smart board positioning was awesome. You were right where you needed to be. You were never in front of your graphics. There was like something up on the screen at one point, yeah. and we couldn't figure out what it was. On that first thing, it was like yeah. a little black box with... But you were very natural, the way you went through all the different uh, elements, how you showed us exactly, you know, uh, how you could actually apply for a permit, uh, that, that worked very, very well. Yeah, going through and like taking us with you, I think worked well. I think with the smart board, we need to work on the way it's lit because it's a little hard to read. And that's like nothing we knew in advance, but I think we'll just have to play around with that and try to get the lighting a bit better mm -hmm. in terms of that. Uh, the weather tease with the goat, awesome. Yes. The, whole, the whole weather package was just yeah. really well put together. At first, when you came up to me, you were like, I want to do a package for weather. And I was like, a package? And she was like, I got goats. And I was like, OK, then we're going we're gonna to include the goats. And I think it worked really well. The rooster off the top. Yes, that sound was great. great. That's always really fun. 
I chased that rooster <laughs> for 10 <laughs> minutes trying to get it to crow. It was arguing with another one that was there. And every time, like, I would hear the other one go, I would rush over to it. <laughs> and I finally got it. So I'm happy it made it in. Yeah, the Nat sound pops were awesome. And I think you took a really great angle with that. Because that's not something I think most people would think of as how the drought affects, you know, people and animals. And the sources you had for that, also really great. You had, I think, three sources, right? Yeah. Great. So that was really well put together. Um, the sports tees, the photo you had up was great. Wherever, oh, one guess you just left. But all of sports, I think, went well. I think one thing we need to work on is, uh, again, B-roll was a little bit shaky. I think a tripod could have helped. And we had some jump cuts, which also I think we need to work on. And that's across the board. That's not just one guess yeah. package. I feel like always use a tripod, always follow Swep. Is it Swep? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then um, also make sure your audio is equaled out because um, I forgot which package it was, but it was all over the place. So if we equal out the audio and make sure that your track and that your um, um, sound bites are all mm -hmm. about negative 18, so that's a good range to uh, be at. And that um, also your B-roll is at a good level too. Mm -hmm. so. And then uh, I think Sam did the graphic for the Tennessee reader. And that was really good as well. Um, again, sorry we cut the Alzheimer's thing. It was really sad. Yeah, we were, we were sad. And the book sale, I know that really disappointed it Katie. Really, <laughs> it really broke our hearts because we had a really We waited till the last minute. We were like in the commercial, like do we cut it? Do we leave it? And then we ended up having to cut it because we were exactly on time throughout the whole show. Production says that I need to have a mic because I talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so we were, yeah, so we did have to cut it, but that wasn't, I mean, it was sad we had to cut it, but we were right on time. So that worked out well. Um, artists with disabilities, that came through. That went really well. Uh, I think that was the one where the audio was a little off. One of the interviews, we couldn't hear her, and we had to have them bump it during. And the track was really loud. Um, that's one thing we, that we have to look at. And one thing that I do is I put my sound bites and my track in, and then I level out the audio, or you can level it out before you put it in the timeline. Mm -hmm. the I think that the shutter speed on that one was a little low as okay. well because it looked kind of... Um, like the flash a little bit when people would move with the, mm -hmm. you know, the ripple effect. So yeah. just make sure in future, just set, if you don't know how to use a JVC, just set it on auto. And, yeah. and I think one other thing, I know we closed with the graphic uh, with the times. So I think that was smart to do. That was a good incorporation. Um, back to Paige, we were just talking about you. You did great really job. well. Great job. Yeah. Loved having not one live source, but two sources. <laughs> that was really great. And you made sure, I think, I'm not sure if you were pacing yourself time-wise, but time-wise it came out perfect. Yeah. Wasn't too long, wasn't too short. I yelled in her ear and said, keep it in one <laughs> question. <laughs> I don't know if she I heard me. Do one. Yeah, because we were, we were in there and we were like, she's got two. I was really worried. I yelled let's in cut her it ear. to one. <laughs> but it went really well. Yeah, it was just the right length. Yeah. And you were very comfortable. And the people you found, I mean, they were just like, uh, they, they moved my heart. They yeah. just... Uh, the to me after too. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, maybe at the end you you could have said so you hear you know the impact that it will have here on, you know when you wrap up things like that you don't need to summarize what they said, but at least just say thank you so much and and turn to the camera and say, uh, you see the impact you know the residents are really happy with what's going or something something like that and now back to you. Uh, but it was wonderful what you did. The package came together really good. I tried again to, uh, you know, to work with you on the packages and how we can, the, the first sentence and, and how we can introduce the sound bites. And I think I just gave you just a few pointers and you got it right away. We worked also on leads today, a lot of the leads, uh, not to start with yesterday. <laughs> And, you know, you understand uh, by now, I just have to poke you a little bit. And all of you wrote these amazing leads, uh, you know, and I'm really proud of you. I just have to keep reminding you at this point, I'm just in awe of what this is our fifth week and how many things you have learned and how many improvements there. I mean, this looked very, very professional, what we pulled off today with innovations and challenges. And all I need right now is just to come to you and just ask you, what's wrong with this lead? And you immediately, you know, oh, yes, I'm saying yesterday. Uh, okay. I said, I'll just leave you, you know. And then I come back, and the lead is really written the way we've talked that leads should be written. Uh, it's not just so-and-so met so-and-so, and reporter so-and-so joins us with the latest. Uh, you, you keep thinking about, you know, why is this important? and 
and how can I sell the story uh, we are introducing with this lead? And, and the packages too, the scripts, uh, getting better and better. And I don't know how you pulled off going to a farm uh, in, the, in the middle of doing a three minute or <laughs> four minute weather and coming back to, <laughs> to tape your, I, I don't know how you did it and the rooster, but it's just impressive what you did. And I'm just so proud that every day you try something new. And I think we should continue doing the, you know, the live when, of course, it, it's, it fits, mm -hmm. you know, the story. To do this reaction of real people, it really, it adds a lot of, to the story. And it's, it's interesting and it's, it's human and um, it's very watchable. And I think, uh, I think we should do more of that. And again, you know, the sky is the limit of the things we can try. And we forgot we have a breaking news animation for the yes. first time. Yeah. So we <laughs> made two innovations today. Uh, but I think we can work more on branding it and just kind of, you know, using Jackson's amazing voice to, we need to think of exactly what we want him to say yeah. and to make it more compelling. But that was so nice to have the breaking news animation. And Taylor, thank you. After sending you all the way to Houston, <laughs> we brought you back because nothing was happening there. We were expecting this huge story. It was great, though, because we didn't know who was going to cover this, the, the tri-delt uh, breaking so story. And then we get a call about the story falling through. And it was like, oh, well, this is just you know perfect. <laughs> so yeah, so thank you for being so flexible. and. We wish that we were laughing when the, the you the know, bus. you know, the Murphy's bus Law, <laughs> Murphy's Law, the bus <laughs> hit the whole, <laughs> you know, sorority. And it like it drove away as the the last part of it yes. was yeah. hopping up. Like it I was <laughs> watching Just the live shot yeah. after we went to tag, and I was like, oh my god, it moved out the of the way as last soon second. as yeah. yeah. So <laughs> maybe when we. When you're planning on how to do this next time, think of you know if there's a bus stop right in front of it. Yeah. Don't put the camera in front of you know the bu yeah. on the other side of the street where this could happen. Just things to think, think about. Oh yeah. I think that the reason that they had it framed that way is because they were very specifically wanting to have the letters in the shot. Yeah. Like they, I know they worked around framing yeah, the letters yeah. around me, um, but then. Obviously, they couldn't see the letters because the maybe bus you could have. I mean, we could, we could see the yeah. letters. It was but just we could oh. see the bus too. Oh, okay. So yeah. it was cool. like stacked. Excellent job. We're just nitpicking. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think the no. viewers are probably they they were laughing just like uh, they were confused. <laughs> yeah, but it, you know, I just I just thought this was just our best yet mm -hmm. <laughs> show. And I know you um, were also working really hard to turn a package for Hushton, especially after Bailey gave that to you. And I'm glad we still got the sot out of it. Yeah, I was happy that we still got the saw. It was it was really making me nervous because I was sitting there, and, and it was going. just like my right. first time being in the courtroom, and they were going back and forth over. W they were nitpicking over one thing, and I was like, "This is not going to end anytime soon," and I don't have anything, and I was really nervous. So, actually, being able to do the live shot really worked out best because I wasn't going to be able to produce a package mm -hmm. for that anyway. So. Yeah, I definitely came in this morning concerned that we were down two TV people because mm -hmm. we were down Monday also. But then we ended up having to cut like half of the stuff we put in the show. It so. was good too. The weather was longer, and yes. that we had an <laughs> awesome team that really came together and had an awesome product towards the end. So mm -hmm. good job, Absolutely. everybody. <laughs> and and Taylor, for you, this was not yeah. easy because the Hushta story is a very complicated story, and for you to pick it up at the last moment, you know. And then pick up another stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that. Uh, yeah, that was that was. That I always happens there. to you. I don't know why. <laughs> it always happens to you. I was like last night when I got the story. I was like, oh, okay, another yeah. so very nothing sensitive can issue. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I was. Um, I I think going into it, um, I knew that it was obviously a sensitive issue and it was yeah. complex, but I didn't realize how complex mm -hmm. it was until mm -hmm. I got into the courtroom and then obviously they weren't shying away from going over every single detail. So then it was kind of like very overwhelming. I'll, I was like, wait, I didn't know these details. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a good experience nonetheless to be able to go in and just like participate in that. So. And so what did you learn what, uh, from that? Um, I learned to 
I've learned this in other in other times of being TV MMJ too, but to stick your ground because I had a lot of people. Um, Marissa actually pulled up the footage. You I don't can, know if you saw yeah, you it. can see in her footage that not everyone is happy she's there. Yeah, but she did not leave. Everyone so. turned around and would stare at me like this, and they would just stare at me until I, I, th I think they thought <laughs> I was gonna get up and leave if they stared at me long enough. <laughs> Um, they didn't stare you out. Yeah, but I was like, no, I know that I have a Rule 22 form and I can be yeah. here. Mm -hmm. um, so just, yeah, just knowing your, knowing where you can be and that you're in the right place. Yeah, having the confidence your ground. that you yeah, know you're Yeah, not right, letting so. people tell you that just because yeah. they don't want the media yeah. there doesn't mean that you're not supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. So it's very important. And Paige, tell us what you learned today because you innovated for us with that interview. How was that and what do you have any lessons learned, any advice on you know, how to pull this off? For um, it's I a first. Um, the, like I guess the thing that made my people so comfortable looking, I hope they look comfortable, but to me they like looked in the very moment they felt comfortable. They it was a um, wonderful moment. It was yeah. just like trying to establish, even if it's a quick relationship, just before mm -hmm. um, you put them on camera or before you just like talk to them is like just you're having a conversation with your friend and that type of thing. Um, and then um, with my package, I will say um, something that I learned from Monday going into today mm -hmm. was take the extra 10, 20 minutes of labeling each clip um, so that when you're editing, you can just be like, oh, where's my b-roll clip of this um, versus like Monday I had a huge issue on time because I waited till the last minute and then everything I couldn't find all my clips so today it really helped to have everything organized kind of like Shumway has told us before. very good advice very good advice and uh, I wanted to say our on-air talent was just naturals yeah. professionals all yeah. of you I like the fact that uh, I saw you you know just lean a little bit put your hands on the desk and that gave you a lot of confidence I think and stability and you were just so comfortable and you owned the show and just the you know the, the three of you just were naturals and brought a different kind of energy uh, and I really like that idea then I don't know whose idea it was to not just introduce your names but also introduce the stories you were you were working on and that was thank you Ashley. That was and Marissa. Yeah. Marissa. It was also partially I watched Tuesday. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I like the way but they did. But it pays so to yeah. watch. Yeah, it pays to watch and uh, um, because it gives an, it an idea of what stories we could continue from our colleagues. And, mm. uh, you know, we're not stealing what they're doing, but let's say we're developing. We're, developing. we're getting so inspired. So <laughs> we're getting inspired by their creativity. And I also I want to yeah. thank our um, our director and our technical team because I know that I was sort of m like messing around with how the normal seating goes and then having you talk a little bit instead of having just Katie do it all. But I think it ended up working really well. Yeah, I did want to add. Okay, I feel like today, like our show was so good that it would not have been possible without the leadership team yeah. that we had this week. Yes. So I wanted to thank you I so much, Marissa. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Marissa, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think uh, I yeah, think the two of you worked great. very well together. I mean, you were totally in sync, and you were totally complimenting each other, helping each other out, and and just coming up with all these wonderful ideas and figuring ways to implement them, and getting this breaking news, and uh, it was really impressive. And yes, mm -hmm. well, a lot goes we to owe work. a lot to you, and a I lot. really thank you. Great, great job, Marissa. First time, you know, it's producing. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. But I could tell today you were enjoying it. You today, told me yeah. it's hard, but I could tell <laughs> you were confident. And you, um, I, I also wanted to uh, to commend I Isaiah and Julia for all the work they did on digital. Especially Julia really impressed me with how prepared she was. She did two stories today. She was still working on one, which very complex story. She came already prepared. She had already interviewed someone for the second story. And then she she had arranged another interview for uh, her second interview for the second star. So really impressed me today. Um, I I see a big leap into how also your writing and the, the first sentence and thinking of interesting ways to introduce your story. And I really appreciate that. I wanted to commend you for that. And Isaiah also, you did a lot of great work on a very 
difficult, a complex subject, Alzheimer's disease. You, you approached it with a lot of human sensitivity. You were very careful with the way you talked about it, and you were very comfortable also on Monday. And today I, know, I knew you were prepared to do another smart sport thing, but we didn't work out, but we are still going to finish your digital um, article, which is very well done, nice graphic. Uh, so uh, both of you, I, I just wanted to commend you and on uh, working really hard. Skylar had a nice Grady Dale. She's innovating also. She's doing a very in-depth, very complex Grady Daily and just kind of taking us to the, to the next level of uh, what this, this is more informative and it, um, it's kind of friendly, but it goes into, you know, it's a little more serious. So that's, and that's also nice. Thank you to Skylar because we did have her ready to go on the smart board if necessary yeah. and then we ended up killing that as well but I think it was great that she was ready to do TV even as a digital producer. Yeah, we're, we're talking about <laughs> you. We're if your ears were burning, we're talking about <laughs> you innovating today. Is You're our third innovation today, trying to take us to the next level on the Grady Daily. So we really appreciate that. And you tell us how... Um, how you're innovating and how you got this idea and anything you want to share with us as we try to take Grady Daily to a different level. Well, I, I stepped out because I was trying to wrap up some more social stuff from Julia, um, but I really want to highlight Sam because he was a really great integral part in um, the Grady Daily. It was his vision to begin with, um, mm -hmm. but me and him just worked as a team this week to make a few changes. Monday, I didn't get out the typical Grady Daily, but we did a Grady National look instead. And so I looked at how what's going on in Washington with the impeachment proceedings is affecting us here in Georgia. My other story was on the Boeing 747. Um, it was f first rolled out 50 years ago on Monday. So I did a look at the history and then what's going on this year. So we kind of just pivoted um, and did a deeper dive. Today, um, what's really helpful for, who, for whoever is digital next week, come in with at least your ideas formulated and you, if, if, if possible, have it written the night before. That really helps you so you can get in, get it approved by Professor V and really have a vision <laughs> for what you want yeah. and have more time to work on it. And that helps a lot when uh, you know you have your background w uh, and you come with your little computers and open all these screens <laughs> and show me. You have really the hyperlinked. Me. All of you, I appreciate that very much. And I would, again, remind you, you know, to fill out our the sheet with the ideas, the story ideas, and add the background. And be a little more specific about who you're interviewing, how you're developing the story. Don't put too much, because we, we want it to be just basics, but also tell us you know, how you intend, what you've done so far, and how you will cover the story. And again, think of variety. We don't want three festivals uh, and nothing in our lead. And check with your counties. Very, very important. That's how you get the news and you do something unique. And uh, But come prepared. It really shows when you come prepared. It uh, And thank you for making that point for Grady Daily as well because we kind of lack on preparation. Usually people come in and they just don't have enough time. And that's just a good You want to get out three stories and you need to have it written by 11 and then it just with it w as being digital producer, you have other responsibilities to make sure your MMJs get out. So sometimes that takes more time on Monday than you kind of get lacking with time to work on your own project. So have that, and then also for any visuals or like um, NAT sound or B-roll, those I really tried to incorporate more of that this week. That was something we really, really hadn't done in the past. So I just suggest trying to find interesting visuals to attach. Because then it also makes your life easier. And you don't have to be on camera saying it the whole time. And Ad you can voice yes. it. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. Yeah. Especially if you're doing some deeper stuff and three different topics. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to ad lib that just off the bat. Yeah. So the thank you for sharing all of this. and. Great job uh, this week, anybody guys. Wants to, uh, any, anybody wants to say we're wrapping up this another successful week where I feel like we, we really succeeded in, in making things even better. Uh, as we look ahead to, to the next week, uh, what do we want to try? What do we want to develop further? Um, anything? Share with us what you learned and what you would like to pass on as a producer. So I know that we ended up not doing the Alzheimer thing.
today, but I think that it would maybe be good if we have something that works as a continuation from Monday to mm -hmm. like broaden on it during our second broadcast. So like if we had had you at the smart board today, you would have been going over data, whereas Monday you went over like more of what it was. I think that could work well with that's some things. That's what he was going to do today. Yeah. He, that's what so I think if that could be incorporated, that would work well. Yeah, because I mean it's Alzheimer's Awareness Month, so we could have something on it, you know, a couple more times throughout. Mm -hmm. throughout the For sure. Time. Yeah, and uh, developing further stories like the bus, the bus driver angle, which we discovered from the comments in Barrow County. Um, that's something that we could develop. The Barrow County, the bus drivers from the I comments. I think didn't yesterday's class pick that oh, up? Oh, they did. Tuesday they probably it heard up. it in our pro show critique. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was my I fault. Guess I they definitely gave out that story idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Fine. I guess they did, but we I each borrowed from each other. We so did. It yeah. <laughs> But just an idea to really look out for, not just check in with the counties, but really look at what people are talking about and keep developing. That's how you understand the additional angles to a big story that is done very well online or you know, is showing a lot of interest uh, in people. And, and what we're seeing is that people care. Our community is underserved with news. And they care and they love it when they're mentioned, when they're so for next, next week, let's focus on all of you really connecting today and on Friday if you can and, and look for the news and come prepared yeah. because it shows. And, and one thing is too, we push out a lot of digital content today. So I feel like we'll definitely have a response either um, on social media or on our website or something like that, that um, whether it's you know analytics 